Hi everyone. Today we're replacing the uh, LX570 or Toyota Land Cruiser radiator. As you may have noticed, these radiators have a defect. They actually develop a hairline crack here that will eventually um, develop a major leak. You can see it leaked all over the place. Um, I tried to put some JB Weld on here and it seems to be working, however as it heats up this gets really uh, soft so I don't think it's a permanent solution. It was just there just in case if I needed to take it somewhere to have it done but then we've decided to do it ourselves because a Toyota dealer wanted $600 just to replace the radiator with the parts included. Well, if I include the parts they wanted 600 bucks. So um, there's some tricks here on replacing the radiator that helps um, and so we're gonna go over that because if you look at the Toyota manual I'll take you it I'll tell you that you gotta take the whole grill off you gotta take the uh, transmission cooler off and uh, you gotta take the shroud and the fan out and so we're gonna try to attempt not to do that and take it out without doing any of those things um, so, um, one of the tricks is to leave this bracket, mounting bracket, on the passenger side um, intact. So do not try to take this off. What you do is you actually take the radiator off the mounting bracket. However, on the right hand side or the driver's side, um, you will go ahead and re remove the mounting um, holes or the mounting screws. So there is one right down here and the next one, I don't know if you can see it, you probably can't, let me get my flashlight, is down there. And the driver's side is much easier to replace um, because there is a straight line there. And so what you'll do is you put your extension one straight in you don't need any sort of wiggling tool or anything and you'll be able to get it putting the bolt back in though could be a bit of a challenge and i'll have some uh, pointers for you on that so i've started the job i have not obviously finished it so we'll do the rest together now let's go underneath and see what needs to be done underneath so here you have to replace the skid plate or sorry remove the skid, pl skid plate and then you empty the radiator i've done that and uh, then you'll have to remove the hoses for the transmission cooler right here and there and then you have to replace or take out the uh, i'm assuming this is the return line or maybe the entrance line i don't know um, but that's going to be the way we're going to try to take it out. So I'm going to take these two out. Um, if you have one of these clamp tools, that'll make life a lot easier. So you can clamp it in and um, take it out. I don't have one, so I've been using a, um, a set of locking clippers. As you can see here, I bought them from Walmart and they have been working reasonably well by the way a shout out to Toyota I mean they know that the radiator is defective um, they have replaced the part number four times now so um, for a hundred thousand dollar SUV having this happen is is not the nicest thing I've got a Tundra it's got 200,000 miles and the radiator is still original so um, if you do have a Land Cruiser in 2008 to 2010 especially have a look at this uh, before you go on a long trip because you don't want it to break let's go have a look at the uh, new radiator um, so you notice that this whole plastic piece at the top is completely different whatever the genius is at uh, the Toyota dealer I ordered this from uh, they left a box on top of this and did some small damages here and there but anyways you can't expect anything better but look look at the damages 
Anyways, but that's besides the point. Alrighty, so let's get started with this video. I'll be back. Right away, sorry, it's a huge mess here. So a few more pointers. When we take the transmission lines off, we're gonna put these Sharpies in there to stop the transmission fluid from leaking out. And then secondly, I highly recommend buying an OEM uh, Toyota radiator. Um, I mean, I know the previous one was crap, but hopefully the new one is better. It's just that the aftermarket kind of taking a risk after doing all of this work and it could go bad again. Alrighty, we're gonna go under there to see what I did. It's very straightforward, this step. I mean, you're just taking the hoses off and, you know, the trick is to move the clamp back and then you can wiggle this and it will come out. I mean, mine, the hoses seem to be in decent shape. By the way, this truck has 120,000 miles on it. But let's have a look. Put the Sharpie's on, as you can see, so it doesn't leak. We will lose some transmission fluid that is in here. So I'm thinking that I would fill up the uh, new radiator with transmission fluid to make sure we lose the least amount of transmission fluid. Um, but then I had a Lexus dealer just do a transmission fluid change for me. And I'm not sure why, but um, my transmission fluid looks very, very dark brown. It's not healthy looking. Let's come back and have a look at that. <laughs> transmission fluid is supposed to be nice and red. And if I look at this, I mean, it's brown. So either the transmission fluid change wasn't done, which is probably the more likely scenario. That's why you have to do your own maintenance in these days. I mean, nobody does a proper job anymore. Look at this. Anyways, so it's just, uh, it's a bit of a pain trying to do your own transmission fluid change in these to measure how much comes out, how much put back in, all that stuff. But but that's why sometimes I do my own maintenance is because you know, because of things like this, you know, you have um I mean I'm not saying they didn't change it, but this transmission fluid doesn't look good. So now this is the step where I tried to take this away from here because I don't want the radiator to hit it. Um, you're going to need two people, one from underneath, pushing it up so you can make sure that these things are all clearing the shroud. And then one um, pulling it up. So you're going to need two people in this stage. Um, I'm going to have my wife come and help me out here. Um, the biggest problem is clearing this guy from this side of the shroud. I think it can be done, um, but uh, I wish I had two video cameras so you could see, but I think if you push this back, because it's plastic, you can see that it flexes back. And I can pass it through, and then I'm good to go on um, both sides, and I'll just have her pull it out. Um, so, um, that's the way we're gonna go about it, much faster much more straightforward um, we'll be back again and you can see it and super fast speed as I take these out I'm just gonna take the remainder of the screws out I mean the bolts out um, so we are ready to go and we want having one of these flashlights would help Bolts could fall in there. 
So one of the things we can do is to put a bit of paper towel inside this. So maybe we can secure them. If not, we need one of those magnet pencil magnets or whatever they're called. see we're missing this side we're gonna take this side off and put it on so alrighty so now that's out I'm gonna try to put the new one in as you can see there is some room in here um, and we didn't damage anything well that's what we hope uh, there's some stuff here I don't know what the heck they are but I'm assuming this is. Oh, I see what that is. Ah, they should sit like this. And that's one of the reasons we decided to do this ourselves, is because, as you notice with the transmission fluid. I wonder what happens if you take it to a mechanic, he'll take half the car apart and then miss half the bolts and, and you're stuck with a half put together car. Okay, we'll be back. So we emptied the transmission fluid out of the bottom of the radiator and there was very little in there. Now I don't fully understand why, but um, so I don't think you need to worry about it, but if you have some world standard transmission fluid from Toyota you can add that to your new radiator before you install it I'm gonna try to add whatever I have here in there and then proceed forward we will be back with the installation of the new radiator so a few pointers when you take this off there is this piece at the top that you need to hold on to Make sure that you, when you pop it out, it's like an alignment piece to make sure that this will go correctly on the mounting bracket. Um, aside from that, it's pretty easy to take this uh, radiator mount off. And then uh, we're gonna get a syringe and put whatever transmission fluid we recovered back in there. And then we're gonna put this back in and Probably going to do a transmission fluid change at some other point in the future. Um, but um, it's pretty straightforward. We're missing the, the one on this side. We keep the one on that side. And we're going to go ahead and now drop it into the um, Land Cruiser. <laughs> So, we have now finished putting the radiator in. Let me take you guys in there. There's really no trick in putting it back in. You do want to move this fan around as you slide the radiator in. And then you put this side back in. And uh, I think we're good now. We're gonna try to um, screw these uh, nuts to the side of the radiator here these guys two of them are in place now so we're all good to go um, I'll let you know if there's anything uh, happens that requires some pointers but right now I think we're good to go okay okay a few things to show you so first of all if you order a radiator from Toyota you will get a radiator cap so don't order one I order a new radiator cap and I'm not gonna need it Second of all, the shroud has got two clips at the bottom and 
That's why you have to pull it up and then push it away. And when you're putting it back in, make sure that you have the clips back in place. And I'll show you where they are. There's one clip right there. You can see it. And then there's another clip on this side that I think I'm not... Oh, it looks like I'm inside there. So we're good to go. Um, so these are the two knots that I was telling you about. This is the one where you're gonna need a flat wrench to do it. So we're gonna continue finishing this off and we're good to go. successfully uh, we haven't had any leaks uh, temperature was steady um, you're supposed to rev it at 2,000 rpm by the way for a while and then keep squeezing this um, hose to try to get all the um, air out um, I think it takes a bit of time to get all the air out so just be prepared for that so just to give you a cost uh, total um, I bought the uh, radiator from a Toyota dealer um, I'll mention who it is Conicelli Toyota um, and it was $290 and I will include the part number um, so you can order it so this is the fixed version apparently so it shouldn't crack anymore um, and then I did buy a radiator cap that you don't need to buy apparently the radiator comes with one so if you're doing this don't buy a radiator cap I did not replace the uh, thermostat I know you're supposed to do that but I didn't do that um, so anyways uh, hopefully that won't blow up um, and then um, just bought some coolant from the Bozeman Toyota, and that was around like, you know, 60 bucks. So in total, it probably cost me around 400 bucks with some tools that I ended up buying to, to try to get this done. Much better than $1,000 or more. I think it would have been more than $1,000 at, uh, at the dealer. I mean, they just wanted 600 something dollars for the labor, and I know they were selling the radiator for 400 bucks. So, um, while you're at it, you may want to clean up the uh, the um, intake, um, and then I'm just doing an oil change too because I've got all the skid plates off. So, but anyways, it's an easy job, and the key is, as mentioned before, to read this bracket on and just open up this one. It really took me around two hours. I emptied it last night, so I just came, removed the skid plate, and took it off, and put it, then you know, emptied the uh, the radiator, and then you know. Um, it was really an hour after that, so you do need some help, but aside from that, it's a very straightforward job and you can save yourself a ton of money. So, all the best and uh, hopefully we'll have some more videos and, and things that we'll end up, you know, doing to this car or the other cars that we have. Thank you so much and talk to you later.